In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain, the smallest one was Madeline. If you believe you must be big and all there to be tough, then you should get to know me. I'll teach you other stuff. And nobody knew quite so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. Like on the day she slipped and fell. dragged her safe from a watery grave. Oh, 
life. You must rest now. Come, Madeline, my petite. We will go home now. Dr. Cohn says you need your rest. Wait! Where is the dog who saved my life? I must thank her. Here, wonderful dog. Come here. Madeline, I am sure that dog belongs to someone. <laughs> See, Miss Clavel? She likes you and she has no collar. This dog is a hero. She must come home with us. Oh, yes, yes, she is a We cannot just abandon her. We will keep her. But only until we find her owner. <laughs> Back at home, the dog chewed a bone that was savory, and the little girls gave her a ribbon for bravery. From now on, I hope you will listen to me. And here is a cup of chamomile tea. Come, little doggy, I will show you your new home. Madeline, you know the rules. Lord Cuckoo Face says, put your feet on the furniture. She wants to know who is Lord Cuckoo Face. Oh, she does, does she? Bon, ma petite chienne. <laughs> Lord Cuckoo Face is the president of the board of trustees, and he makes the rules around here. <laughs> then the girls sat down and broke their bread. Sleep well. Good night. Good night, dear Miss Clavel. Miss Clavel turned out the light. After she left, there was a fight about where the dog should sleep that night. The doggy will sleep with me tonight. Mm. Oh no, with me. <laughs> no, no, with me. Excusez-moi, mes amis, but since this doggy saved my life, I think she should sleep with me. Says who? were most willing to care for their pet. They brushed her, they pampered, they cuddled, and yet... She has no name. What shall we name her? I do not know. I am in charge of her delicious food. Oui, oui, and I will bring her fresh water. You name her, Madeline. 
Oh. Very well. What do you want to be called, ma petite chienne? Look! It begins with a G. Could it be Giselle? Yes. Is it Genevieve? The new pupil was ever so helpful and clever. All right, girls. How much is nine minus six? Chloe, two. <coughs> Excellent! What a clever new pupil! Now, what is the capital of Spain? Barcelona? No, no, little girls. Oui! Regardez! She is spelling Madrid. Madrid is the capital of Spain. Remarkable. Not only a hero, but so well educated. And polite, too. She could sing and almost talk. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. <laughs> And she enjoyed the daily walk. When the 1st of May came near, there was nervousness each year. For on that day, there arrived a collection of trustees for the annual inspection. The inspection was most thorough, much to everybody's sorrow. <laughs> Whatever can that be? Come out and let me see. Dear me, it's a dog. <laughs> Isn't there a rule that says dogs are not allowed in school? Miss Clavel, get rid of it, please, said the president of the board of trustees. <laughs> yes, but the children love her so... Please do not make her go. We tried to find her owner, but it turned out she was a stray. I dare say, said Lord Cuckoo Face. I mean, it's a perfect disgrace for young ladies to embrace this creature of uncertain race. <coughs> Off with you. Go on, run, scat. <coughs> go away and don't come back, <coughs> Maurice. Take this mangy beast for a long drive in the countryside. little girls. It's no use moping about. Let us get dressed and go right out. The sooner we're ready, the sooner we'll leave. The sooner we'll find Miss Genevieve. I will never stop looking until I found her. They went looking high. Have you seen our dog? And low. every place a dog might go.
In every place they called her name. But no one answered to the same. They even visited the pound, but Genevieve could not be found. Hours after they had started, they left to go back home broken-hearted. Oh, Miss Clavel, I am too tired to walk home. Me too. Me too. I will call a taxi. Taxi? Taxi? Have you seen our dog? Have you seen our dog? She has no blades and she is brown. She might be in this part of town. Whatever will become our dog. We will never ever find another dog like Genevieve. They went home and broke their bread. We love our bread. We love our butter. But most of all, we, we love the journey. <laughs> and brushed their teeth and went to bed. Poor little Madeline could not sleep. All that she could do was weep. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on the light and said, Something is not right. Something is not right. Something is quite wrong. Something is not right. And so I sing this song. At night it should be calm. It should be still, but I heard something stir, and it's given me a chill. Something is not right. Something is quite wrong. Something is not right. And so I sing this song. Who is there? There, in the light of the open door, was Genevieve. She was lost no more. The girls cooked Genevieve a wonderful meal, the smell of which made their favorite dog squeal. <coughs> extra biscuits and extra beef, only the best for dear Genevieve. She was petted, she was fed, and everybody went back to bed. Good night, little girls. I hope you sleep well.
Miss Clavel turned out the light. And again, there was a fight. And each little girl cried. Jenny, it is mine tonight! <laughs> For the second time that night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, Something is not right. And afraid of a disaster, she ran fast and even faster. There's one more fight about Genevieve. I'm sorry, but she'll have to leave. That was the end of the riot. Suddenly, all was quiet. Bon, Genevieve, you will sleep here. <coughs> For the third time that night, Miss Clavel turned on the light. Genevieve? Genevieve? Where are you? Miss Clavel! Miss Clavel, hurry! Hurry, come with me! And to their surprise, they found that suddenly there was enough hound. <laughs> to go around. Several weeks later, at the front door, who should appear but their least favorite landlord? I can smell that airy beast from miles away. You have disobeyed my direct orders. I have a feeling there is a furry creature in there. Sound somewhere near. Aha! Just what I suspected, but twelve times worse. Shoo! Get lost, all of you! I read somewhere that these are supposed to be man's best friend. Perhaps it would be good for someone of my uh, position to have such a friend. Oui, oui, Lord Cuckoo Face, absolument! I will take him home, Miss Clavel. Uh, N'est-ce pas? It is up to Genevieve. What did she say? Genevieve says you may take the puppy home if you treat him with kindness. And if she and the other puppies may live here. Why, yes, I will. They can, of course. He picked up the pup and headed for the door. Kindness, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all there is. There isn't any more.
Simon had been naughty. His mother ticked him off, and Simon began to sulk. His mother found him later still sulking. Still here, Simon, if only you could see yourself sulking, you do look a sight. Simon looked at himself in the mirror, and he drew himself sulking on his blackboard. Later, feeling better tempered, Simon went for a walk, and he met Henry, his chalk drawing friend. Simon, there's trouble in the land of chalk drawings. Will you come? So he followed Henry to the land of chalk drawings, and there Simon saw the strangest sight. The elephant had five trunks. The cat had prickles like a hedgehog. Wow! The dog had three tails and didn't know which to wag. The birds had too many wings and couldn't fly properly. The flowers in the field were all drooping. Simon was puzzled. Why are all you flowers looking so miserable? The flowers pointed at the sun. Haven't you noticed, Simon? The sun has lots more rays and the heat is killing us. Simon looked at everything and was very puzzled. He and Henry met the caveman and the little dinosaur. They were standing outside a whole line of caves. The caveman was angry because he didn't know which cave was his. Then Simon heard an angry quacking and went to the duck pond. The ducks were upset because there were huge waves on the pond. The teacher called Simon. Just come and look at my classroom. Simon went to the classroom. All the desks and chairs had been lengthened so that the children couldn't reach them to work. The children were let out to play instead. The train driver was very angry and called Simon. Simon wanted to go after the culprit on the train, but he found it had square wheels. What's more, the track had been altered. Simon and Henry followed the railway track, and there, at last, they caught up with the culprit. It was Simon's double, still sulky, who was altering everything with his chalk. Simon asked him for the chalk. His double refused. No, I want it. I like changing the drawings and mixing everything up. So Simon took his own chalk and drew a picture frame round his double. The double tried to get out, but he couldn't. Helpless, the double agreed to behave. So Simon drew a smile on his face. And now his double ran off happily to join his friends, the children, who liked him because he got them off school. Simon was very relieved. I promise to keep smiling and not sulk in future, Henry. Henry looked doubtful. Don't forget you've got to change all the drawings back to normal, Simon. And Simon found it hard to look happy when he saw all that work in front of him. Simon was enjoying himself, drawing on his blackboard, but he had to stop. It was time for his music lesson. On his way, Simon met Henry, his chalk drawing friend. Simon, someone very sad needs cheering up. Can you help? Simon was happy to go with Henry to the land of chalk drawings. When they arrived, Henry led him to the wood. Simon could hear some very loud sobbing and crying. There, in the darkest shadows, was the elephant, looking the picture of misery. Dear me, whatever's the matter? The elephant managed to stop crying and asked Simon to listen to something. There, you hear that? That's what's making me so miserable. You see, 
I want to be musical, but I only blow one note. The birds sing. The soldiers play instruments. But the only music I can make is one note. You see, everyone laughs. <laughs> what did I tell you? I do so want to be musical. Simon felt very sorry for the elephant. Then he had an idea. He took out his chalk and changed the elephant's trunk into a saxophone. And now the elephant could play whatever notes he liked. Simon headed for home, pleased that he'd been able to help. The birds were singing, the band was playing, and everyone was happy. Suddenly, there was the deafening noise of a giant saxophone. Everyone was startled and ran away with their hands over their ears. The elephant was enjoying himself so much he didn't notice how upset everyone was. On and on he marched round the land of chalk drawings, and on and on went the deafening saxophone music. Simon and the people were at a loss. But before long, the elephant began to get tired and hot, and hungry and thirsty. And then the elephant found he had a problem. As he had no trunk, only a saxophone, he couldn't drink. He couldn't eat either. The elephant became miserable again, more miserable than before, and he couldn't even blow his trunk. He went up to Simon. Simon, I can play music all right, but I can't eat or drink. I shall starve if you don't do something. So Simon changed the saxophone back into an elephant's trunk again. And Simon had another idea. He talked with the band leader who gave the elephant some written music. The music had one note for the elephant to play, which fitted in perfectly with the band music. The elephant was musical, after all. And now, while Simon left to go to his own music lesson, the chalk drawing people, instead of laughing at the elephant, clapped and cheered as he played real music with the chalk drawing band.